Hi guys, I'm Gabby and welcome to my channel if it's your first time here and if you're returning, thank you so much and welcome back. Today's video is a little different, but I think it's an important topic as it gives you guys some things to think about to ensure that your loved ones who are immigrating here to the U.S. are able to create a strong financial history here. However, let me put this disclaimer out. I'm not a financial advisor or an expert, but I am just offering what I know and what I did that worked for me and my family. And perhaps this might be helpful to you as well. But as always, I encourage you to do your own research on anything that I or anyone else shares with you to confirm that it's best for you and your family. Okay, we're talking about ways to build your credit once you've moved to the United States. So why is this important? Well, you will need a way to build credit history in the U.S. to access financial products and services like purchasing a car, renting an apartment, or purchasing a home. Although you may come from a country that has its own credit system, you will most likely be unable to access it here in America. And in the U.S., just like other countries, it has its own credit system standards. So understanding it is extremely important because here we rely heavily on the credit system in regards to finance. One of the easiest and most convenient ways to build your credit history in the United States is to apply for a credit card. Now, of course, this isn't the only way. We'll briefly go over other options available to you as well. But first, let's quickly talk about how the credit score system works in the U.S. Well, in the U.S., the credit scores operates on a system of point values. So the higher your credit worthiness, the more points you are awarded and the less you're considered a financial risk of defaulting. Basically, you can be trusted to pay back what you owe. So to maintain a healthy credit score, it's important to use your credit cards responsibly by paying your bills on time, keeping your balances low, and not applying for too many credit cards at once. Now, there are several credit bureaus, but the three major credit bureaus or credit reporting agencies in the U.S. are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Each of these credit bureaus collects information from creditors about the borrowing history, how much you owe on what types of accounts, whether you've been making payments on time. So there are a few key factors that affect your credit score in the U.S. And there are several credit score models that can be used to determine your credit score. But the most commonly used one here in the U.S. is called the FICO score. This was created by the Fair Isaac Corporation. So its calculations is based on five major factors. One, which is your payment history, which makes up 35% of your score. So the credit score range in the U.S. is between 300 to 850 points. Anything over 700 points is considered a good credit score. But before you apply for a credit card, you will need a social security number. Or if you don't have a social security number, you can use ITIN or individual tax payer identification number. One option that's available is to apply for a secured credit card. A secured credit card is a type of card that requires the borrower to put down a cash security deposit as collateral. The secured credit card issuer will determine the deposit amount. It can be anywhere from 250 or more depending on the credit card issuer. So the funds that you put on your account are used as a protection against borrowing the money from the issuer. So if you default on the credit card, then the credit card issuer keeps the money that you deposited. It's a great way to establish credit for new immigrants. My husband opened a um, secured credit card at the same time that he opened his first banking account here in the U.S. And about 10 months later, after showing his credit worthiness through making on-time payments and keeping his balances low, his secured card was switched to an unsecured or what's known as just a traditional credit card. Another option available to you is to get a U.S. credit card with a cosigner. A new immigrant can apply for a credit card by using their family member or friend or spouse information as the cosigner on the account. 
they will be responsible for making the payments if you don't. So the co-signer will need to have an established U.S. credit history, which can improve your chances of being approved for the credit card once you apply. But just make sure that the co-signer clearly understands what they're agreeing to. Now, I know I previously said that you most likely will not be able to use your credit from abroad here in the U.S., but perhaps you have a relationship with an international bank in your home country. Some international banks might use your existing relationship with them in your home country to issue you a credit card in the U.S. So these banks will issue a credit card if you have an account back home and they're willing to extend their relationships overseas. Of course, you will need documentation to prove your residency status here in the U.S., like a passport or a valid U.S. visa and possibly a bank statement from your home country that proves that you have a relationship with the bank that's overseas. Now, of course, there are many ways to skin a cat. Using a credit card to build your credit is not the only way to go. Although credit cards might be considered easier and faster, new immigrants can build credit without applying for a credit card. But how can you build credit without using a credit card? Well, you have a few options. There are several um, options available. One, you can become an authorized user. Perhaps your spouse or family member will agree to adding you as an authorized user on their credit card. This is what I did for my husband. He was added as an authorized user on one of my credit cards. But just make sure that the credit card issue does report the authorized user's activities to the credit bureaus. Also, as a new immigrant, you might want to consider applying for a credit build loan as an alternative to credit cards. These loans can build your credit by reporting your payment activity to the um, credit bureaus. The only downside is that you may have to pay a higher interest rate. There's also options to improve your credit by having your rent payments being reported to the credit bureaus. Some landlords and property management companies will report rental payments to the credit bureaus. If your landlord doesn't offer this, there may be some outside service agencies that are willing to do this automatically for you as well. Also, you can report your, your utility and cell phone bills to the credit bureaus. Some credit bureaus like Asperian will credit you for utility and cell phone bills that you are already paying. In the past, these payments did not positively impact your score, but make sure that you take advantage of these credit building opportunities now. When you open your credit card accounts, it can take up to six months or more to build your credit score. Of course, your, script, your credit score is based on your payment history, your debt levels, and other factors. And the best way to build and maintain a good credit score in the U.S. is to make sure that you're paying on time. What I've shared is not the only options available. Perhaps you know of others. If so, please feel free to share in the comments below. But I just wanted to share what my husband and I found helpful for us and to give you a few things to think about to help you prepare your loved ones to get started on building their credit in the U.S. once they get here. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.